everyone, my name is Cheyenne, and I am the Collections Assistant here at the Anderson Museum of Natural History. Today, I'm here to talk to you a little bit about our history. Our history began with the birth of William Werner in Pennsylvania all the way back in 1842. Our collection came to Anderson and opened its doors under the name of the Regar Museum on August 30th, 1930. Our collection turns 90 this year. So to celebrate each week in August, we will be uploading a video telling you a little bit more about our history so that hopefully you can appreciate our history and our collection as much as we do. As stated before, our collection began with William Werner. Werner was a true Renaissance man and his interests were greatly varied. He enjoyed business, painting, taxidermy, and educating. Around the time Werner turned 21, he began to collect bird specimens. He collected these with preservation in mind. Almost 10 years later, he began to arrange his specimens in a way that made them appear lifelike. He created natural habitats around them and painted backdrops to complete the dioramas. These were the first of their kind in the United States. Taxidermy was a bit different in the 19th and 20th century, and it used compounds that we now know are extremely harmful. To prevent the specimens from decaying, the inside of the bird's skin was coated in arsenic dust. This also prevented pests, such as carpet beetles, from burrowing inside and ruining the specimen. Because of the arsenic, these birds must be handled carefully and with great consideration. Not only do they contain poison, but they're extremely precious. Werner and his unique dioramas traveled around the U.S., mostly to teachers' colleges, to educate about preservation and the importance of studying the natural world. He even became the state taxidermist of Pennsylvania. At home, Werner had a wife, Lucetta, and a son, William B. Werner. His daughter died early in life of pneumonia. Eventually, his massive collection outgrew his home. To bring his collection to the public, he opened the Wonderland Museum on the Atlantic City Boardwalk in New Jersey. It showcased taxidermied oddities, Werner's massive collections, and art pieces. The entry price was just 10 cents for adults and 5 cents for kids. The importance of Werner's collection cannot be overstated. It was the first of its kind, inspiring others to create dioramas of taxidermy specimens in a natural manner. This presents the specimen as an actual animal rather than a curious oddity. When the connection is made that the animal seen was once alive, the viewer is more likely to feel compassion and seek out methods of conservation. Conservation played a major role in Warner's work. Because he sought to preserve certain specimens, the museum now showcases birds that are extinct in the wild or extinct entirely. On display in the Birds of the Americas Hall are several examples of endangered or extinct avians. It is thanks to Werner's foresight that we have this collection. Werner's museum stayed open until two years before his death in 1912. The collection passed to his son, William B. Werner. The collection remained with him until 1914 when a young entrepreneur interested in natural history purchased it, impressed by its exceptionality. This man was H. Seven Regar, another key figure in the foundation of the museum's collection. Today you can still see the fruits of Warner's lifelong labors here in our Birds of the Americas Hall. Come discover all of the birds that America has to offer from the most common seagull to the most impressive eagle. You can even test your reaction time against that of a bird with our Bird Reaction Time Interactive. We encourage you to come explore your world with us Tuesday through Saturday, 10 to 5, last admission sold at 4.30, and Sunday, 1 to 5, last admission sold at 4.30, and summer Mondays, 10 to 5, last admission sold at 4.30. Thanks, guys.